This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. Denver, Karen Valentine, Walt, the cast of Ghost, Henry Winkler, Mr. Ed and Wilbur, Marty J. Wiley, Mark Smidbauer, and in the center square, Wilbur Neal. All on the new... Tuesday at 6, Wednesday at 10, Thursday at 3. That Darren Pamela Ferdin. Um, oh, no, not another Burgess Meredith show. Um, Welcome to the place your parents didn't understand. The world of 60s and 70s television. Welcome to Vast Wasteland. Welcome, Welcome home. home. Welcome to another episode of Vast Wasteland, the video journal of 60s and 70s TV. I'm Mark Schmidbar, along with Wilbert Neal and Marty Wiley. Well, tonight we're going to talk about talk shows. <laughs> talk about talk shows. <laughs> yep, and uh, with uh, Carson leaving and all that, we wanted to kind of give a Carson quick tribute. Carson left and all that. Yeah, <laughs> left and all that. Uh, going to jump on the bandwagon and talk about talk shows, just like everybody else is. Exactly. But before we get into that, I want to tell you we're on... Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 10, and Thursdays at 3 p.m. here on ACTV Cable 21. Also, if you want to write into Vast Wasteland, you want to write into Box 151411, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. There it is right there. So, tonight's talk shows. Uh, certainly, uh, it's a very durable format because it's just so damn cheap. <laughs> Well, yeah. not anymore, <laughs> trying to get the people to come on there, you well, know. Well, no, you get paid to be honest Right, I mean, yeah, the guests get paid, like, scale, which is, like, a couple hundred bucks. <laughs> well, you still got to fly them in. Yeah, well, you got you well, you to pay for the host now, and that that's expensive. But when it started, it was really cheap. True, true. It right. was a way to pretty much fill up time. <laughs> we just go down the hall, hey. Um, we we want to we want to talk to you because you know you're like a star and um, we we um, we're getting putting together this new kind of thing. It's gonna be we're just we'll just talk to you. Yep, that's and, it. And um, so that's that. So what are we gonna call it? I don't know. Let's see. We're talking to you. It's a show. Uh, mm, how about the conversation hour? <laughs> no, no, no. That seems a little wordy. Um, well, well, why don't we call it a talk show? We'll call it a talk show. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the whiny TV executive. 
nostalgia. <laughs> that famous running character. Well, the first really uh, in the first talk show, I, I believe. I mean, the the first big one was the Steve Allen Tonight Show. Okay. Um, ran uh, what fifty? I believe like fifty two to. 57, something like that. Before our time. Before our time. Yeah, uh, very see, much so. Before our time. <laughs> and uh, they... Uh, and from what I understand, he used to steal bits from Ernie Kovacs early morning show. Well, yeah, really a lot of the stuff, yeah, er Ernie Kovacs was on there. In fact, Ernie even um, subbed for Steve Allen mm -hmm. from time to time, you know, uh, one of the first substitute hosts. And... Um, and started that tradition, huh? Right. <laughs> yeah. And Steve's concept was of the ensemble uh, regulars. I mean, okay. they, they had they had guests on, but they also had your ensemble O regulars. You had uh, see, we had Steve and Edie on, uh, and let me go through here. Bill Wendell was actually an announcer at one point. Hey. They had the same Bill Wendell doing Letterman now. Um, but they'd uh, they'd. At the time, Tonight Show, the, the first version of the Tonight Show was thought up uh, as as something just to kind of to fill up all that time, <laughs> because because uh, the local stations at the time were like, well, we'll do the news and we'll pretty much sign off. <laughs> there's no one's gonna watch anything at that time of night was pretty much the feeling. And yeah. NBC said, hey, there's some prime uh, prime uh, commercial time we can fill up, so let's do a darn Tonight Show. So. Okay. Well, let's see. So you had your various incarnations of The Tonight Show. Uh, you had the, the, from 54 to 57, was Steve Allen. Okay. And then uh, you had America, no, I'm sorry, Tonight, America After Dark, which Ooh. ran for, a, uh, looks like about seven months. <laughs> okay. That's, was that the, the Jack host, Parr one there? No, that, no, 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 no. That was, this is before Jack Parr. Okay. Between Allen and Parr was this weird thing where they, they kind of went out and... According to this, it was a lot like the Today Show, <laughs> like oh, news it was items. Like yesterday, a long time ago. Right, <laughs> it was like news items, and oh, okay. they and they would go out to like uh, night spots in New York and just take cameras and wander around. <laughs> hey, that's an idea. <laughs> yeah. Columbus What's this coast name here? Jack Les Cooley. Nighttime. And Al Jasbo, Jasbo Collins. Al Jasbo, Jasbo Collins. Was well, he in a name. band or something? I think that's the way can get a name like Jasbo. Hey, Jazz Boo. <laughs> so then we moved into the What's Jack Carr show. <laughs> oh, Mort, Mort Lindsay Quartet. Mort Lindsay. Oh, yeah. That ain't still, he's, yeah. Hey, he's still a name. <laughs> yeah. So Jack, when uh, Jack Parr moved in, he kind of moved away from the uh, very conversational style to more really of a. Uh, people didn't tune in as much to see entertainment. They they tuned in to watch Jack break down or attack somebody verbally. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. <laughs> wow. Jack would like emotionally break down during the show. <laughs> there were several times he walked off. There was this famous incident where he had, uh, in a uh, in a joke, he had mentioned WC. Now, WC at the time meant water closet, and which it still meant does in London, right? I guess. <laughs> I guess. Which means bathroom. Okay, he said WC on the air, and for doing this, the censor said, "Oh no!" And so, so apparently on the on the um, on the later, it was either I guess it was it would have been the taped version of the program that went to the West Coast. They bleeped out the whole segment. <laughs> so he got Sensors. mad. He got mad the next night, and he walked off like two minutes into the show. And uh, uh, Hugh Downs, which was who was the announcer at the time had to basically carry the show for the rest of the time. Hugh Downs of concentration? And Hugh Downs of 2020 fame. Yeah, yeah was was a big time announcer then. Yeah. And so you, so you had your... Uh, but they also had the semi-regulars. There's a long list of semi-regulars. You had Pat Harrington Jr. <laughs> later go on to One Day at a Time. Had uh, Peggy Cass. Didn't Pat Harrington Jr. on that show create a character that people thought was true? Guido Panzini. Yeah. Okay, and they thought, and people accepted it as a real right. person right. when it was actually him. <laughs> but that's all B.O.T. Well, and Cliff Arquette also created a character that probably carried him all the way through the rest of his career. Charlie Weaver. Weaver. <laughs> Later to be seen, of course, on Hollywood Squares for years and years and years. 
So then Maybe there was cast. Joey Bishop, yeah. uh, Florence Henderson, Buddy Hackett, Betty White. <laughs> so people, would, they basically, yeah. yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> so she'd just kind of come on, and you Joey know they all they all come on yeah. and do their bit, and then get <laughs> off. That was it. Because at the time, of course, they were filling up uh, like an hour and forty-five minutes because the local news, the eleven o'clock news, would only run from like a eleven to eleven fifteen. Wasn't much happening back much, then. <laughs> of course, as far as I'm concerned, there's not enough happening to to warrant the amount of local news we have now. Well, let's but see, all you need is the weather. Right. Who got shot? I mean, nobody really got news. shot. And I don't know there. what the yeah. Clippers did. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you need to know to so, function in Columbus. <laughs> so they had to fill up from like 11:15 to 1 a.m. Uh, for you young youngsters, you wouldn't remember that the Tonight Show actually ran all the way to 1 a.m. for a long time, all the way into I believe the early, maybe like the late 70s. I believe was when the Tomorrow Show got moved up to 12:30 and all that. Okay. But until then, it was like uh, going on into your uh, your one o'clock time. Well, yeah. then we have another Tonight Show which ran from uh, basically just a few months in 62, and that was basically waiting for Carson, because Carson had a contract with CBS for, oh, shoot. The Tomorrow Night Show. <laughs> no, 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 no. He was doing a game show <laughs> on CBS called, oh. I don't know, he not seems like a national Press Your Luck or whatever it was. <laughs> Well, in any case, he was doing a talk show over there, and CBS wouldn't let him out of his contract, so they had to kind of get in there and uh, kind of fill up the time until Carson was available, which, of course, he started in August of 62 and, and just recently left after being on for 30 years. 30 and years thousands and thousands, thousands of dollars. Of, yeah, that's right. <laughs> thousands? <laughs> like millions. And, that's, and became a <laughs> multi-multi-trillionaire. <laughs> no, he would have been a lot years. richer had he never got married. Well, that's right. true. <laughs> right, that's true. But, you know, talk shows I remember mostly were daytime talk shows. Right. And being that I grew up in a very fertile <laughs> television land Earn between your Cincinnati vacation. and Dayton. <laughs> what? Earn Go your vacation. I think this was the talk, the, uh, the prime No, show. it wasn't that. It okay. was... Who do you trust? Who do you trust? Which was exactly like... One. It was exactly like You Bet Your Life. It was a scripted show. It was, a, it was like a clone of your bet your life. It was, okay. Johnny would stand there and he would do and he would do scripted stuff with supposed guests. Stuff. Yeah, but anyway, daytime. I remember in the morning coming out of Cincinnati, and I think you guys might have got it up in Columbus. Paul Dixon show. Well, I remember the Paul Dixon show. And, yeah, because I think it went all the way up to Cleveland. It went up to Cleveland. And yeah, Paul, the Ruth baby. Lyons show, yeah, right. the 50-50 club, I think it was first, because they had 50 men and 50 women in the audience. No, I don't remember that one. Well, that was... That was... It, it came up this way, at least. It came up this way, yeah. And which it kind of evolved into the Ruth Lyons, which kind of evolved into the Bob Braun show. Yeah. And those just ran forever. And I guess they would come up to the fair and do the show yeah, from the fair. Would. And then coming out of Dayton, we had this young news guy named dark hair too named phil donahue mm -hmm. who did a talk show out of dayton which is pretty much like what he does now <laughs> except now he gets to run around with the mic did he did, right. wasn't he stationary no not really because <laughs> i remember him standing up and then it seems like he moved from dayton to chicago right before he moved to new, new york. york now but i remember those shows those were the first talk shows i remember were those. Mm -hmm. And Phil's show seemed to have always been like it is now. Like, I don't think he's made any really big changes. <laughs> if he was limited to the stage at the time, it was probably because technology didn't have mic cords that long. Right. I, I think I just kind of remember him not not being as... As, as um, mobile? Yes, as mobile, as, as physical. Well, as the, well, I, think, I, well I remember he used to... He, there was the, the more standardish type talk show set, and then after a while he'd get up and talk to the audience. Of course, now there's not even a chair for him. He doesn't no. even bother sitting down. <laughs> well, I remember Ruth Lyons always... It was always clever on her show. She she always had the mic in a bouquet of flowers. Yes. So she could sit there and hold this bouquet ah. of flowers and look very lovely. And it seems like all the mics were in a bouquet. Mm -hmm. But anyone who was coming through Cincinnati, which I guess a lot of big names came through Cincinnati. Doing dinner theater and stuff. <laughs> stopped and did the Ruth Lyons show. Yeah. <laughs> and then later did the Bob Braun show. Then later they had the Nick Clooney show. And then Nick Clooney went off to New York to do a game show. <laughs> 
Oh well. <laughs> but they, I don't know, I think, I don't know if, if daytime talk kind of started down in the Cincinnati area. Because well, we had a lot of people coming through for um, Midwestern Hayride and <laughs> well, I think they all, all that ha happy stuff. I, th I think a lot of local markets did their own little talk shows. You know, but I but I really think the first one really to make it big was Phil, <laughs> long before Probably, anybody else yeah. to really. I mean, daytime talk shows until the '80s was basically you had you had uh, Phil, mm -hmm. you had Dinah for a while, Dinah Shore. Oh yeah, Dinah Shore. Yeah, you had you had Merv. Merv Griffin. <laughs> oh, you, you had Merv. <laughs> and then you had Mike Douglas. Mike Douglas. Mike Douglas. Douglas yeah. yeah, with the with the huge. Flowers. I always remember the Mike Douglas show. Yeah, kind of Mike like Douglas the dating, the dating game, right? It's like they took the same set and just uh, took off the dating game thing, and right. here's Mike Douglas's yeah. show. <laughs> and for a long time, there was a thing that maybe Mike Douglas and, and Merv Griffin were the same guy. I remember hearing no. that. <laughs> I remember hearing that. It was, it was. People were confused. But then it seems like their two, their two fortunes separated because Merv became a trillionaire and uh, selling well, off what Wheel of Fortune. To what happened to Mike what Douglas? Is he selling cars now or something? He's probably doing infomercials now I don't know. He used, to, he used to sing lovely songs, you know, right. real touching, poignant, boring songs. Right. And then he'd have a weekly co-host. That was always yeah, the big thing. Yeah, he'd have a weekly co-host. Yep. I remember, yeah, I remember <laughs> used to watching that. And Mike Douglas would be on like 11 a.m. or something. And I think <laughs> Merv was like, well, where I got it, it was like an afternoon. Right. Like, yeah. like a round dinner time it, yeah, kind in, of in, market. Like, a, it was between four and five for decades in Cleveland. And Merv was like right <laughs> after that. Right. Well, of course, so Merv. like both in there. It's like from 3.30 to 4.30, then 4.30 to 5.30 or something like that. Right. Yeah, like the soaps are finished and now what do you want to watch? Right. <laughs> Well, they had, uh, of course, Merv for a while had been doing, uh, he tried for about two years to compete with Carson, which didn't work. Nah. <laughs> he tried that in the early 70s, one of the, the long list of uh, people who tried to take out a Carson. But uh, <laughs> Sounds like the Merv Griffin show is where I first remember seeing Steve Martin. He could have been. And he had dark hair, but he had the arrow through his head, and he was doing the banjo thing, and everybody was sitting back going... <laughs> What the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> and nobody was laughing. <laughs> and it was like, I was very young then. I mean, he must have been a writer for the Smothers Brothers then. Right. Oh, yeah. And it just, like, totally bombed. And I'm pretty sure it was a Merv Griffin show. It just totally bombed. And then, what, probably seven, eight years later, he tries the same thing. Everybody loves him. It's great. He's a wild and crazy funniest guy in the well, world. Well, you know what it was. People earlier just weren't doing the right drugs. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been it. And then you talk about uh, Mike Douglas. I can remember um, this young um, actor, um, martial artist going on there. Bruce Lee was on there and <laughs> demonstrated his great one-inch punch. <laughs> <laughs> it was like he was on there and they had on somebody, uh, people that were proficient in different martial arts and um, they were all up there doing their different things, and this one, this one older gentleman was up there um, showing his stance. You know that nobody could get him out of this stance, and he's up here a staunch guy, and <laughs> has other the other people to come up there to get him out of his stance. You know they're up there pushing him and everything. They can't get him out of it. Bruce comes up, punches the dude, knocks him down. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you're out of your stance now, aren't you? <laughs> and they got all upset with him about that. And he says, hey, I don't push, I punch. You know. <laughs> Well, a memorable thing for that. And then they had, they, I think that was another place they did, um, like, a, they had a Batman reunion on there once. And I think, I think yeah, Mike Douglas yeah. was one of the first ones to do the reunion. <laughs> well, I don't think it was actually a reunion then. I think it was actually, let's have the cast of the show on. Well. Because it's like, I remember back. Hmm. I, I think it might have been just Could've after been. the show went off, Maybe though. Just yeah. It might have been like a off? year or two later that yeah. they had them all on there. <laughs> but, uh. Seems like he did that and have the cast of shows on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the first to come up with that. <laughs> Let's get them all back together and see who hates each other. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to talk um, talk shows. Let's see. Uh, well, in the Merv Griffin show, had Arthur Treacher's. Before the fish and chips. <laughs> right. Now the dear boy himself, Merv. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's Arthur doing now? <coughs> yeah. I think he's dead. <laughs> Yeah, I th yeah. Arthur died like Arthur's in the 70s. Pushing up the daisies. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's why he disappeared suddenly from the show. I think <laughs> that was basically it. He bought the farm. But so. his name lives long. <laughs> On fish and chips. Fish and chips. <laughs> if you can find him out there. Gee, right. I'd like to be immortal like that. Big turning oh. sign. That's right. <laughs> that would be a way to be immortalized. <laughs> 
go to a restaurant, put your name on it, and die. Yeah. Pizza! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, you think the boxes will go up in value after you die? <laughs> yeah, probably would, you know. <laughs> yeah, so that's a bad thing about dying. Everything that you've done automatically either goes up in value or it just drops right off away. the face of the earth, you oh, know. So, so Arthur Trucia would be like the first um, hokey sidekick guy. <laughs> Well, Almost. Well, I think Ed was... Get Ed and they're kind of tied in there together. I don't know when the... the I, I believe the, the, the early Merv shows were the prime time... Or not the... Or the late night ones. I'm pretty sure. I think Merv didn't really start until like the late 60s. Oh, so, okay. so, Ed, so Ed would have definitely been first. Well, that's quite possible. All right. Because Ed started right at the beginning, so... But I wasn't allowed to step that late. Yeah. And when I could, I didn't think they were very funny. Then, <laughs> it never really was. It looked too much like... Just Ed would sit there and just... Ho, ho, ho! Jay Leno, are you listening? We got a laugher for you. Yeah. <laughs> I used to watch um, watch um, Carson, if I'd ever watch him, just when they had on animals, you know, different animals, and see what they would do or what they wouldn't do. Just the things those animals would do. Those wacky, wacky animals. Those nutty animals. And hey, if we're going to talk shock shows, we should talk about Art Linkletter also. <laughs> yes, Art Linkletter was one in the afternoon. Kids right. say the darndest thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> they sure do. I used to watch that. Well, that was a late afternoon when that I was, lived. Um, they kept pretty much resurrecting that. 2.30. Oh, yeah. Tied up. Like in the 70s, I think they tried to bring that back, and they, well, kept, they kept bringing it up over well, and over. About that time, though, I think that was when his daughter decided to take a header out of a window or something. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where that got started. Don't take drugs because you'll think you're a bird and fly out a window like Art Linkletter's daughter. Yeah. Mm. Oh, this is something to look into. <laughs> of, course, of course, Buffy didn't listen to that, did she? <laughs> no, <Yeah>. not. <laughs> well, there we are, though. Well, so there were a lot of pretenders to Carson's throne. You had uh, uh, Joey Bishop showed up, tried, yeah. to, tried to make it, just didn't work, and of course, uh, Joey sidekick Regis Philbin. Yeah. <laughs> now that doing that, Regis doing that time. darn ding, ding with uh, Kathy Lee. Kathy Lee. Kathy Lee. Well, Who's Regis well, and well, Kathy well. Lee? Oh, oh. <laughs> they're coming to your town. <laughs> Hide. <laughs> <laughs> they're just a little too sweet in the morning. Uh, uh I gotta watch somebody nasty in the morning. Cause now it's just. You got your Phil. You got your Sally Jesse. We're gonna cry on this show. She has, has boxes of tissues there. Now wait a minute. There. Before you go on to somebody else, I just want to say one thing. <laughs> Sally Jesse Raphael. Pick a first name. One first name. None of this. No, <laughs> none of these. All these dozens name. of it's, names. It's Sally melodic. Jesse Raphael. Sally Raphael. Jesse Raphael. You know that's fine. But it's not a melodic. Hmm. Sally like Jesse Raphael. Yeah. Raphael. <laughs> <laughs> It does you got your Geraldo, who's right. back on in the morning. You got your Oprah. Right. You got your Montel. <laughs> More. I like turned on like like I like turned on the TV like expecting to see Geraldo after school doing the dishes, right. turn it on. And the mustache looked right, but <laughs> there was no hair on the head. Yeah. Uh, no so tiene pelo. <laughs> So, so you got you got Mori Povich. You got Mori Povich. Is this starting? Having the best time of his life right now. That's right. <laughs> Let's see. Dennis Miller has one late at night. Right. Yeah. And and for you fans of uh, of cable, uh, the uh, Alan Havy's Night After Night on yeah. on Comedy Central. But I, it, uh, you people, the people in Columbus may not know this. The fans, the the fans of Night After Night. Where did Nick Nick Bakai go? He's now. The, the he's the sidekick for Dennis Miller. And True. we don't know this because we, of course, we, we don't Dennis see Miller. Dennis Miller, Miller in Columbus. But I was in another city and it's like I heard Nick Mackay's voice. He's the he's the And the, I thought the Nick sidekick. was gonna become like the, yeah. the, the Paul Schaefer of oh, comedy, yeah. you know? The, like Paul Schaefer is the is 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 music's own little whore, you know? <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's Paul Schaefer. <laughs> there's a book Paul Schaefer. Paul Schaefer. <laughs> You know, I just, it's, it's delightful to turn it on and see Paul Schaefer everywhere. <laughs> I, 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 I just want to say, you know, Nick, you can do better than Dennis Miller. In reality, you don't really have to be a sidekick. You could probably do your own show. That's right. very funny. <laughs> so. Unless he thinks that all his bits would just kind of fall into one show and that right. would be it. In, in one week, he would use yeah. up all his bits or something. <laughs> that would be it. <laughs> but, but, well, you know, we, we can't talk talk shows and not talk about... Tom Schneider. Who <laughs> <laughs> got blown away by Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> well, this is true. Now, Dan Aykroyd, he, how many careers Dan, did Dan ruin by doing them better than they did themselves? Yeah, yeah. 
You got but, to the point where if you turned on Tom, you're like, Tim or Dan. Yeah. But, <laughs> oh, but Dan Tom does Schneider, he much better. Was, he was just one of my favorites. He was on there. In fact, it was because of Tom Schneider that I'm probably the, the big fan of um, bloody nasty horror movies that I am. <laughs> like he had on, he had on um, John Russo and um, George Romero and... Uh, the folks that did um, the Phantasm movie, he had them all on there. It was like the time that um, Dawn of the Living Dead came out and Phantasm came out, and they had them on there because they were movies that were controversial at the time. People um, didn't know whether to give them the R rating, give them an X rating, or just leave them unrated. And so they were, and a lot of markets they came out as X rated because they were just so gory and so oh, yeah. vividly um, violent and everything. And so uh, they had clips on there, and George Romero started, no, look, see, that's funny. Come on, we're we're laughing at that. And they got a good phantasm. Yeah, we were gonna have we were gonna have chunks come out of the guy's head, <laughs> yeah. you know. It would have been great, but they the the censors just got a hold of it and yeah. they just liked it all up. So uh, but yeah, Tom would have on he'd have on great guests. In fact he had on Peter Chris when Peter Chris uh left Kiss, he had Peter <laughs> Ooh, Chris on there with no makeup. Was. Solo <laughs> career. Had, had Peter Chris on without his makeup and it was like it was, Whoa, go Tom, yo. <laughs> Tom Schneider, they're there in the um, early to mid middle 70s there. Right, and that, well, we went all the way up to about 19, uh, actually 80, like 81, Did 82. Really? Did he, yeah, Did he really? Did he last that long? Yeah, because cause they had the Rona Barrett uh, deal where they got, they had both of them on and they lengthened the show. That's when, that's actually when Carson's show got cut to 60, so they could do 90 minutes, and it, it was like apparent from day one that Tom and Rona detested each other to the point yeah. that they kept them in different cities <laughs> and they said and it just didn't work and boom they were gone because darn it they needed a place for letterman yeah. <laughs> and, and speaking of that young upstart letterman he started off in early mor well it wasn't early morning but it was like a morning right. slot right yeah. yeah they did this the morning show which was basically exactly the same as as the letterman that we know and love today but yeah. uh it uh, the morning people just didn't understand it. Oh, they like, Housewives were like, "What was? What they is this? They didn't know how to take what it. Is you that? know, it, it was um, <laughs> Larry used to getting information and real talking, and here's Dave out here talking to um, uh, street vendors and having restaurant races and things. Mm -hmm. You know, seeing who could get the food there the fastest, and they just didn't know how to take it. I just saw one recently, A uh, um, and E, uh, actually until September. They're going to stop showing the, the Letterman reruns. I'm oh, say no. Yeah, because no. apparently Dave is, his production company is not happy because they're not getting any money for that. Ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah, that <laughs> they're getting make me a little zilch. crazy, yeah. too. Yeah. So, that's, that's, uh, why we're, that's why we're in such a mood, because we're not getting any money for this. <laughs> and, and where did Arsenio, who, who Roseanne Barr just describes to a T, <laughs> uh, where did he come from? <laughs> <Yeah>. Cleveland. <laughs> Cleveland. Cleveland. <laughs> Just like Howard the Duck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But one one thing I do remember, uh, they just had a Letterman show on was uh, was uh, Dave interviewing the guy that had the product that catches fish like crazy. <laughs> now they brought had this big uh, swimming pool that they brought in, like an a, a above ground swimming pool, and they just loaded it with fish, and it didn't catch fish like crazy. In fact, it didn't catch anything. You know, and and Dave's like, are you aren't you getting tired pulling pulling those out? Is your arm getting tired pulling all those fish out? <laughs> Maybe I should have had crazy fish. Yeah. <laughs> And the guy's talking about, well, those are small mouth, and, uh, <laughs> oh, what, what, the lure's too big, is that it? They can't get their mouths around it? <laughs> oh, what a bummer. <laughs> well, I, I always like the, uh, the things I let him in, where you had the, the crazy, the crazy new inventions, like, uh, I, I could just, re oh, shoot, I can't remember any. I could just remember some little thing that was shaped like Dave that kept doing like this to pick up something and <laughs> was just throwing them I all like over. The pet tricks. And the pet tricks, the pet tricks right. are good. The stupid human tricks, they're even funny. And, but he used to drop things off of the high towers. Yes, he, yes, and the Velcro suit. Yep, yeah, yep. the Velcro suit, the, uh, the Alka Seltzer suit. Mr. Curious, remember Mr. <laughs> Curious? Yes. They, had, they, they only did that until they could uh, really, you know. Uh, <laughs> Because Dave got too darn oh, famous and everybody time. would recognize him. <laughs> Our wonderful camera operator is signaling us, but it's party time. Party time! <laughs> well, I guess we know what that means. That means it's time party to just time. about get out of here. But first, I just wanted to mention one more show. We couldn't get out of here. Talk shows without talking about Dick Cavett. Oh, yeah. oh the, sorry, Dick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one more. He super to the to the uh, to the the Carson throne. Didn't happen. It was just too darn urbane. <laughs> and, 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 and what about that uh, David Frost? <laughs> oh, yeah. There's an import for you. <laughs> oh, well. Okay. 
Well, we're being told we got to get out of here. So next time on Vast Wasteland, we're going to be talking about sexy TV. <laughs> so tune in for that next time. You'll want to warm up the VCRs now for that. Yeah, set them so, now. So for all of us. Set them now. <laughs> that's right. All of us here at Vast Wasteland, we'll see you next time. Yeah. Good on, everybody! We'll talk to you then. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland.